Jim Rooney is an album-producing legend, essentially defining the Americana music genre by producing legendary albums by Nancy Griffith, John Prine, Iris DeMent, Towns Van Zandt, Ian Tyson, Bonnie Raitt, and many more. He gained those big years managing the famous Club 47 in Cambridge, Massachusetts, which he started to do in 1965. That same year, he became a member of the board of directors at the Newport Music Foundation, eventually becoming a director and talent coordinator for the famous Newport Folk Festival. But before all that, he was just a teenager playing folk, bluegrass, blues, and country music that he was learning from his radio in his hometown of Dedham, Massachusetts. Now, after high school, Jim decided to get an undergraduate degree in classics at Amherst College. And while at Amherst, Jim ran into a banjo player, Bill Keith. He was playing banjo on a Pete Seeger long neck banjo at the time, and they realized they were both fans of the Flat and Scruggs album Foggy Mountain Jamboree. The two started to hang out with one another, talked about bluegrass music, and of course played music together. In 1962, Jim Rooney and Bill Keith decided to form a band. There was a mandolin player in the area by the name of Joe Val. I grabbed him, a fiddle player, Herb Applin, and Fritz Richmond on wash tub bass. They called themselves the Blue Velvet Band and played bars and honky-tonks in the New England area and, of course, checked out every band that was coming through the region. Uh, by this time, Jim was doing his master's in classical literature at Harvard. Bill was in training for the U.S. Naval Reserves, but fortunately they were still both in the Boston area so they could get together and play music together. Now, Bill was a massive Earl Scruggs fan. He started to slow down Earl Scruggs' banjo breaks and instrumentals and painstakingly transcribing each note each string that he felt Earl Scruggs was playing on what fret he was pressing down to. On, he was putting that down onto paper, and it's a method known as tablature, and I'm going to share what he did with that tablature in a later installment. We're going to stick with Bill and Jim. Now, one summer break, Jim took Bill to the Hillbilly Ranch, and that's a venue in the New England area that Jim had played when he was only 16. The great banjo player Don Stover was playing there, and... Bill was mesmerized by his playing, realized there was much more than just Earl Scruggs in the banjo world, and he started to listen to a lot more Don Stover, transcribing and learning what he was playing. But Bill was also interested in developing his own sound, specifically working on two fiddle tunes that were very, very difficult to play in that Scruggs style, The Devil's Dream and Sailor's Hornpipe. Now, inspired by Don Stover's playing, specifically this lick right here, on Bring Back My Blue-Eyed Boy to Me, Bill realized he could play fiddle tunes where every note played on the banjo was part of the melody, instead of those syncopated rolls that Earl Scruggs had developed and, of course, every bluegrass banjo player was emulating. In 1963, Jim, Bill, Herb, Joe, and Fritz recorded the album Livin' on the Mountain. Jim Rooney and Bill Keith recorded a medley of The Devil's Dream and Sailor's Hornpipe in one take, and it was the first time that Bill Keith was recording his style of banjo playing that would eventually be called melodic style or chromatic style. Later that year, Jim was awarded the Fulbright Fellowship to study in Athens, Greece at the American School of Classical Studies. The members of the Blue Velvet Band all went their separate ways. Jim would come back to the U.S. and would start his career in music, though more, of course, behind the scenes rather than on stage. But Jim would continue, still continues, to play music. He'll play with the Irregulars at the Station Inn every now and again. And Jim and Bill would continue to play music together as well, including a great album from 1969 that is a must-have in your collection. It has Eric Weisberg on guitar and Richard Green on fiddle. And of course, Bill Keith, with his innovative melodic banjo playing, would forever change the bluegrass world. <laughs> 